the 11th lecture is on the general equations of motion and in this first mini lecture we will do the introduction to the general equations of motion okay <clears throat> the governing equations according to the Newton's second law and especially for the fourth equation we can write at these three equations so force equals uh, the mass times the acceleration and for aircraft because we're also concerned the rotational motion and then we have the moment equations and similarly on the left hand side is the moment on the right hand side is the moment of inertia times the angular acceleration okay so in total we have six equations of motions right and now we will address this equation how uh, it, it applies to the aircraft before we expand the governing equations we need to introduce uh, assumptions for simplification because we will uh, all the analysis further will be based on the assumptions here so the first assumption is uh, aircraft is rigid and symmetrical in this case uh, the cross moment of inertia will be zero so for example i x y equals zero i y z equals zero the second assumption is the perturbation is small from trim state uh, what does that suggest uh, physically so it means the velocity disturbance uvw is far less than the uh, true air speed and since the uh, velocity dispersion dis dis disper disturbance are small and the angle disturbance is also small if the angle is small sine theta then it's roughly theta remember here theta is in radian instead of degree okay theta is small then cosine theta is about one the third assumption is the rate of change is linear what does that mean so for example we know delta x that's a force change and so it's it can be affected by the um, the linear velocity u so we have the partial x partial u that's a coefficient and that rate of change is linear so we can have delta x equals x u times u and what does that does that mean mathematically because if we have Taylor series and we are only taking account of the first term by neglecting the higher order term after the after this okay so x u rate of x force change due to the velocity change u is a constant so linear rate rate change the fourth assumption and the last assumption is the lateral and the longitudinal modes can be studied separately so this is very important what does that mean in at the beginning we introduced there are six equations of motion in total and because here we know that and that's a combination that six equations combines the longitudinal modes and the lateral modes since the lateral modes and the longitudinal modes can be studied separately according to the assumption here so we can group that six equations into two groups each containing three okay so for example longitudinal variables u w and q won't give rise to any change of lateral force in a moment that's based on the this assumption and uh, similarly the lateral variables v p r won't give rise to any change in the longitudinal force in a moment so what does this suggest the longitudinal pr parameters won't influence the lateral force on moments so that's what assumption four is about okay so we need to be very clear about these four assumptions and their physical uh, implications okay so with these four assumptions let's see how can we progress now we are using the x force equation as example so if we expand the left hand side mu dot that's uh, uh, the right hand side of the Newton second law and then we expand it to several things so it's influenced by several things the x force so it's uh, related with u v w p q r and also it's uh, we have some an uh, inference from the magnitude of the gravity and also the elevator 
deflection. So the last part x delta e is uh, elevator deflection change give rise to the x force. Okay, so let's see. And so the first uh, six turns are contributed by UVW and PQR, and then it's followed by the gravity contribution, and uh, the final is uh, elevation contribution, elevator contribution. Okay, so I think we recall, we can recall this uh, table, and uh, we've in used it very at the very beginning. Okay, and now if we, since we are talking about the x force equation, we are looking at the second column, and we can see x in here. X is only um, influenced by x u, x w, and x q, and the rest either because of the um, the the longitudinal mode and the lateral mode are separately. So about that assumption, some turns are negligible and some turns are just there because of the symmetrical um, aircraft symmetrical assumption. Okay. So we can, uh, since we only consider the three components between UVW and PQR, so we, this equation can be greatly simplified. And these three terms can be eliminated. And if we rewrite the uh, x force equation, it can be this way. And so you can see here, the right hand side is just uh, uh, the elevator contribution, but the left hand side contains uh, the, the rest. Okay, so in this way, this type of uh, equation, the left hand side we, we call the course of the x force and then the right hand side is the effect because we need to produce um, elevator deflections to address those x forces okay so you see the left is course and the right is effect that's what we do and uh, this is how we simplify the x force equation so I'm rewriting it here and you can notice the right hand side and it's just further simplified by minus xt it's just uh, in written make it the easier to write write down okay and for the rest of the equations five equations we can just uh, write them down in here if you're interested you can do the derivation okay and the right hand turns are due to the control services deflections and now there is a question the governing equations in non-dimensional form so what's the non-dimensional form the governing equation because it's more useful in analyzing uh, different air, different types of aircrafts and before we do the non-dimensionalization so equations of non-dimensional form we need to get familiar with how do we do the uh, non-dimensionalization so for force we usually use half rho v square times s as a denominator and for moment and because moment need to times the length scale for longitudinal lateral directional moments the denominator is slightly different so for half rho v square times s c bar this is uh, denominator for longitudinal motion, but half rho v square is b, that's the denominator for lateral directional motions. And also there's a characteristic time because if you're uh, calculating or solving the non-dimensional equations, then that it's always, that it always needs to times this characteristic time. We will see this later. And non-dimensional mass, and again, mu1 is for the longitudinal motions, and mu2 is for the lateral directional motions. Okay, now in tall, mu1, mu2, and we can have c bar divided by v equals tall divided by mu1. And we will use this conclusion later. And non-dimensional derivative, because we always have derivatives, partial something, partial t, and how do we non-dimensionalize the derivative? And for example, we're doing some derivative with respect to t hat, and we know t hat is uh, t divided by tau. Tau is a characteristic time, and then we can take tau out. So 
d hat equals tor times d. So that's a way to non-dimensionalize the operator, differential operator. So d hat bar, that's a non-dimensional operational uh, derivative of operation, operator, equals tor square times d square. So that's a rule for doing a non-dimensionalization for the governing equations. Okay, so again, we are starting with the speed equation or the x-force equation, and that's the original form. And since we are doing non-dimensionalization, and each turn, each individual turn, need to be divided by half rho v squared times s. And in that way, we get this one, this equation. So on the lower side of the bar, you always have half rho v squared times s. Now we need to simplify it. And we are addressing each turn individually, separately. So first is the first turn, x u times u, for the non-dimensionalization. And we can separate the two, two parts. And OK, so we have c x u, that's the coefficient of x force change due to velocity change. And times u hat, that's a non-dimensional perturbation velocity. And now if we look at the second term, m divided by half rho v squared times s times du, and we just uh, do the uh, extract v and the separate one way into the, uh, into, the, into the d operator, and then we can minus tor times du hat. So this is what happens to the second term. And, and also we know tor, u, tor d equals tor d hat. So that's a non-dimensional form of the derivative. And the third term is uh, x force change due to vertical velocity change. And we do similar things as above. And then we have c x w times, times uh, w hat. So this is how uh, we do the simplification for the second third term. And we know w hat is non-dimensional and it's, uh, it's equivalent to the to the angle of this angle of attack for the aircraft. And the fourth turn, and it can be written this way. And what people does is just uh, on above and uh, below, C bar is multiplied. And we are separating V squared into V times V. Okay, and finally we have CXQ times tau divided by mu one DQ, and we can simplify further. CXQ divided by mu one times and D hat theta. So this is what happens for each individual turn on the left hand side, and on the left hand side we also have another one that's a component of uh, gravity and. Uh, we just divided by half rho v squared times s, then we have CL times theta because the lift is to is produced to address the gravity. So now the gravity is mg, and so that's equivalent to the force. Lift of force. And finally we have xt divided by half rho v squared times s, and that's a force uh, non-dimensionalization, and eventually you can have x hat, that's a non-dimensional form of the uh, x force due to the elevator angle deflection, okay? So we can rewrite the non-dimensional form of the speed equation, and similarly, we can conclude the longitudinal, non-dimensional equation for longitudinal uh, modes and also for the lateral modes. So there's three, uh, two groups of equation, in total you get six equations. Okay, so this is a 